Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mean Gene Show here on iHeartRadio, powered by Podbean. Getting you ready for some NBA playoff updates here. I am still in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, the site of Game 5 last night between the Gold State Warriors and the Memphis Grizzlies. But uh, before I jump into the action, let me bring my co-host. He joins me all the time here on the Mean Gene Show, especially when we're talking NBA basketball or NFL football. Uh, he works for Bally Sports Southeast, covers the Carolina Panthers and the Charlotte Hornets. Please welcome to the show, Dustin Pfeiffer. Hey, Gene. How you doing today? Man, I'm trying to recover from a wild, wild Wednesday, not only uh, in the NBA, but certainly here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, just crazy. Last, uh, last night was just crazy in the NBA. It, it, it definitely was, and, and same thing. I'm I'm battling through. I'm battling some sinus issues with this weather, but hey, when we're talking NBA playoffs, you gotta just you gotta push through it. And, and what a night it was last night. We had two different types of games: one close game, and then one statement game by the Grizzlies. So a lot to talk about. Oh, a lot to talk about. So hey, if you are into the NBA, and I know you are because you like this show, and I, I can tell, Dustin, we getting a lot of a lot of new listeners and everything. It's just been great, and uh, especially when we do our streaming live show but uh we're we're, we're taping this one but I, I i tell you what man oh my goodness uh we uh, first of all let's just you know the the, the nba is uh, who would have planned every game now that's left in the nba is a game six that that's coming up here who who, who would have thought that it would have been that way dustin yeah the way the way the first two games went in some of the series you were thinking they could have been some short series here and there, but seeing how some of these teams have bounced back at home, we've got all these series up in the air. And I'm telling you what, Gene, <laughs> it's one of those one of those playoffs we haven't even got to the conference finals yet. But it's pretty wide open with who can really make a run here for this championship. You don't in the NBA, you normally have those four or five teams who you think can win a title, but this one's pretty wide open this year in the playoffs. It's wide open, and I'm going to say, Dustin, I and look, I was so disappointed when I found out that John Morant was not going to play in game five last night uh, here in Memphis. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Well, you know, and I've never really seen Steph Curry and the Ghost State Warriors play. I, of all the teams, and I've covered a lot of basketball, I have never seen Golden State. This this roster, you know, well, at least with Steph, Draymond, and Klay Thompson, I've never seen them play. So that was a treat. But uh, And then I thought about it. I said, you know what? This team is pretty good without John Morant sometimes. And last night, uh, and we're going to cover it in great detail, but, man, they, they made me, you know, forget about that he was not on the court last night. Yeah, they're, they're one of the one teams where they, they in the NBA where they can lose their star and still come out and play good basketball. I think the record now is 21-6 and six when he doesn't play this year. That's, you talk about that. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's somebody losing their star play, whether it's Giannis, whether it's Jokic, and B, now you're talking John Morant. A team to lose its number one superstar guy and be twenty one and six without him just shows what Taylor Jenkins and that team has built. And they they proved it last night that hey yeah John may be out, but this series is nowhere near from over, and they got something to say. They didn't they didn't they didn't sweat man they didn't flinch. It, it was just it's crazy. But anyway, so let let me just tell you exactly where we are right now in the NBA. Uh, over in the uh, we we'll start with the West. Uh, the Western uh, semifinals of the NBA. You got Dallas and Phoenix. That series, uh, Phoenix leads that series three to two. So game six will be coming up there uh, tonight. Uh, and then you have the Golden State Warriors and the Memphis Grizzlies. That series is now uh, three two. Golden State leads that series. They they could have wrapped it up last night. And over in the East, uh, Eastern Conference semifinals, you have. The Miami and the Philadelphia 76ers, the the Heat lead, leads that series three games to two. They play tonight, um, and then you have the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics. Now, uh, the Milwaukee leads that series three to two, going back to Milwaukee. So, uh, Dustin, man, this yeah. So Boston, and, and let let's just go ahead and start with that game. Then let's let's okay. just start there. Uh, I was preparing. Because uh, it's just a walk from the hotel to the the FedEx Forum, so it's a couple of blocks. So I try to time this. I try to watch as much of that Milwaukee Boston game as I could. And by the time I got in the shower and got dressed, 
they were uh, Boston was up by 20 points. So I said, okay, this one is over. So let me head on down to to the arena. But I did not find out that Milwaukee won that game until I saw it on the jumbotron. <laughs> I said, like, what? <laughs> they yeah. win, they win one ten to one oh seven, but they were down by as many as fourteen points in the and you know I found out later that they were they were still down by fourteen points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it, it was an unbelievable game and an unbelievable comeback by the Milwaukee Bucks, and that just goes to show Eugene that championship experience. You know, the Bucks didn't have it last year, and they finally get that ring, and now they, it shows that no matter where they're down, whether it's home or away but they know what they need to do to come back and get a win. And what a performance by Giannis again, going for 40 points. But really the guy who really made shot after shot and made defensive play after defensive play was Drew Holiday. The plays that he made down the stretch, the block on Marcus Smart, then the steal. I mean, that's just the kind of the kind of championship DNA that the, the teams talk about. And that just goes to show these, these teams are pretty even. But then when you add that championship experience from Milwaukee, that's what came out on top. Yeah, Giannis uh, took the coupon. 40 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists. Bobby Portis, double-double, 14 points, 15 rebounds. And Drew Holiday, 24 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. Almost had a, a triple-double, which, you know, and, and we make fun of Drew Holiday, and we say he shows up every other holiday, you know. And But he did <laughs> he, he did what he needed to do. to, to And they needed that because you, you got, you got uh, what's his name, Middleton sitting on the bench. And, and and Giannis, of course, you know he's always going to go out and give it his all. But man, what a what a big performance! And now that to be in the driver's seat, which it looked like the Celtics because they have home court advantage today, or they had it yeah. anyway. And now to look at look at this series, like you just said, uh, Dustin, having that uh, uh, championship experience is paying off. Yeah, I, I don't want to slight Boston because let's not forget they did go into Milwaukee in Game Four and get a big win. So yeah. they've already they've already proven that they can win on the road. So True, they, they 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 can go up there and get a win in Game Six. But I, I kind of go back to what you said, Gene. I mean, a championship team takes care of business like that, mm. goes and steals one on the road and comes back home. As a championship team, they know they have to step on their throat right now and not let this get to a Game Seven in Boston. So I expect those guys to step up, Giannis, Drew Holiday. You said that Bobby Portis is in there. All their yeah. role players have stepped up. Yeah. Like Connaughton, Grayson yeah, Allen. Yeah. So they, they've really had a, a full team effort step up. And, I, you know, like I said, don't get me wrong, Boston can go win up there. But I just think Milwaukee knows they've been there before and they know they have to go close this series out on their home court. So I would expect Milwaukee to go close it out and get a win and move on to their conference final. Yeah, I just hate that. I, I And I'm still looking for highlights of what happened in that fourth quarter because – like I said, they, the second quarter of that game, Boston just you know they beat them twenty eight to nineteen, and 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 they outscored them in the third quarter. But man, I, I missed it. I I didn't see none of that fourth quarter. Yeah, and the big the biggest thing I saw, Gene, from watching that game, I I had the multiple screens going, was trying to keep up with a bunch of stuff. But from what I saw in that fourth quarter, Jalen Brown for the Celtics had a huge third quarter. Mm. He had sixteen points in the third quarter and was really propelling them to what looked like a win. But then he goes only scores one point in the fourth quarter. Mm. Jason Tatum doesn't take a field goal attempt in the final minute of the game. So when you have two of your best players right there not kind of getting those last second shots or not putting up points in the fourth quarter, that's one of the main reasons that they let that comeback uh, for Milwaukee happen to get that win. Well, I know one thing that they didn't do, and they did not let Al Horford uh, have another big night. He uh, yes. eight points, eight rebounds, six assists. So they really – uh, played great defense on him, according to the stats. And then uh, Jason Tatum, 34.6 uh, rebounds and, and, and four assists. So, but I look, hey, these, you know, every, like I said, the NBA, the ratings got to be off the charts now because no one would have thought that these games were going to, you know, get to game six, all four games uh, are at the game six. And then Dustin, you know, I had a, a tough choice to, to decide, okay, you know, I knew I was going to see a semifinals round, and I, I just thought this Memphis uh, and 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 Gold State was just more intriguing to me, and because last year I went to see uh, Milwaukee and and, and the uh, uh, mm -hmm. Brooklyn, mm -hmm. you know, and and it's just man, the the playoffs are just great. So let's 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 look at the, uh, the that series last night. Uh, first of all. Uh, the, the the blues, the food, the barbecue, everything. You you've been to Memphis, right? 
I have not. That is one. one oh, you got to, you got to, you got to get it on that bucket list. It. I got to get on the bucket list. I got to <laughs> come down to Bill Street, see a game, and because that it really seems like they've got something building down there in Memphis. Yeah, I mean it's not a big city, and I grew up, you know, like you know, fifty miles from here over on the Arkansas side. So I, you know, I was always tuned into what was happening in Memphis. And of course, you know, there's Graceland, Elvis Presley Boulevard there and all that great stuff. But man, uh, this franchise over the years, you know, they came over from Vancouver and, you know, they have had flashes of greatness uh, many times. They, you know, the old Zach uh, Randolph teams, you know, those teams were always exciting. But this team here and, to, and, and you know, to not have, well, John Moran is a marquee name, but some of these other guys, they're all popular here in, in Memphis. But uh, they, they have some great. And, and last night was just, uh, I don't know, I didn't see that one coming at all. A 134-95 win by the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, and it's, uh, Dustin, at some point in time during that game, they were up by more than 50. Listen, the biggest the biggest lead was fifty five points. I mean, we're talking <laughs> fifty five points in a semifinal playoff game against somebody like the Golden State Warriors, who has championship DNA. It's something that I did not see coming um, because you got to remember, Gene. Let's take it back a step. Memphis was in prime position to steal Game Four in Golden State, and without John Moran again, mm-hmm, and they mm-hmm, let that mm-hmm. slip away, and they let Golden State get that win. And once Golden State got that win, and went up three one, I was thinking to myself. That's kind of one of those losses where they should have had it and they let it slip away, and now that series may be over. But what so you got to give all the credit in the world to that whole Grizzlies team, that coaching staff, the way they were able to have those players come back and bounce back at home. And, again, you may even look on the Golden State side and say maybe they thought this series was over and they let their guard down a little bit because John Moran's not playing. But th- this team shows they're not quitting, and you're right, Gina. It goes to show that, yes, John Moran is the superstar. He's the focal point. But they have built that team from top to bottom. You're talking Dylan Brooks, Jaron Jackson, Brandon Clark, Tyus Jones stepped in. All these young guys they have, Stephen Adams is a veteran center. They've got all these guys they've built as a team to have that depth to where if Ja goes out, they can still be competitive. And, and competitive they were. What a blowout that was. I'm telling you, Gene, Golden State's playing with fire. I know they have championship experience, yeah, and yeah. they're still favored with the 3-2 lead. But they better go and take care of business on their home floor because there is no way in hell they want a game seven back in Memphis. Oh, no, not. uh, I don't even know if this city can handle a game seven, man, because game five last night just seemed like it was a game seven in a sense. And, you know, with the celebrations going on and the disappointed uh, Golden State Warriors fan fans, you know, leaving uh, the arena. But, uh, Dustin, seven players in double figures for the Memphis Grizzlies. And the three ball, um, the three ball was just unbelievable. Uh, Jaron Jackson, I'd never known him to be much of a three-point shooter. He was four for six uh, last night. And then uh, Tyus Jones, big shots, man. This guy, he was so confident that I think at one particular time he had a, there was a fast break. and He just stopped at the three-point line and boom. And, and then, uh, Desmond Bain. So that the, the shots were definitely going in. And Dustin, they really had to do that because, you know, Golden State was so big. They they can get big on you, you know, at at, at any point in time. And of course Steve Steven Adams does his does his thing. Um, you know, but still Golden State is bigger than than, than Memphis. And they are, but I do think I think I think Golden State is bigger as far as with their with Draymond, how they play him and stuff like that, but I think the depth and the bigs uh, of of Memphis is what wore them down, and what's going to be the key in this series because Golden State does have some bigs they can throw. They can throw out Draymond Green, they can throw out Looney, they can throw out some guys, but they don't have that that athleticism that that, that Memphis has when it comes to big oh, yeah. guys, and I think yeah. that's the key that Memphis they did last night. Obviously, Steve Adams, like you said, he's going to do what he does. Mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. goes out and gets 13 rebounds, mm-hmm. um, and six of them are offensive rebounds. But you got to look at guys like Brandon Clark, those type of athletic bigs, Jaron Jackson, who can step out and shoot it and, and still grab rebounds. He had eight rebounds. Those are the kind of guys that are going to cause problems for Golden State because the Golden State's best lineup is going small and having Draymond at the five. So if they play Draymond at the five, yeah. you've got to have guys like Jaron Jackson and Brendan Clark yeah. stepping up, and they did that last night yeah. um, to get a big win. Give it up to to, to uh, Coach Jenkins, uh, uh, Taylor Jenkins, for 
managing this game. When I, you, you look at the stats there, no one played, no one single player for uh, Memphis played over 25 minutes last night. And you got to, I mean, that's just some coaching. You, you know, Anderson, 19 minutes. Uh, Bain, 24 minutes. Melton, 24 minutes. Jones, 24 minutes. Dylan Brooks, 24 minutes. Jaron Jackson, 25 minutes. So that's some coaching, Dustin. It definitely, it definitely is, and, and it helps that his team was definitely, you know, had the pedal to the metal from the start. But that it really helps your guys keep that balance, um, gets everybody involved, keeps them rested. And so I think both these teams, even Golden State's guys, didn't play a lot of minutes because it was a blowout loss. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. both of these teams, you would think deep in a game six, like legs are getting tired, teams are getting tired. But both of these teams uh, didn't play heavy minutes in this game because of the lopsided score. So. I think it's going to be really key in that game six in Golden State of who can come out and make and, and, and throw the first punch because both should have fresh legs. Yeah. Both should be a- amped up knowing that um, it's another elimination game. So it'll be key to who can come out and, and take that first punch against each other. And, you know, looking at Golden State uh, last night, uh, uh, you know, well, look, Steph Curry, let, let me just say, uh, he did a move last night where, you know, he always practicing uh, du- uh, dribbling with two balls, right, and, and this yeah. craziness. But he did something last night. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He, you know, went behind his back, went between his legs and doing that crazy dribbling that he does, and then just stepped back and shot a three just like like nothing. I mean, this guy plays basketball like it's just – well, it is a game, but, I mean, he plays it like it's a, it's just a meaningless game. Yeah, he he's one of the ones, Gene. I always, anytime he came to Charlotte and I was covering the game, I made sure to get there like an hour early just to see his warm up routine because what he does mm. is spectacular. And I mean, it's like a game in itself, just watching it the warm up routine. So, so he he's unbelievable. So that just gives Memphis even more credit to the job they did. But let's not forget who Golden State is. They have that championship experience. Oh yeah, you know oh, yeah. They, they got the big three. So I, I expect them to respond in Game Six in Golden State. I think it is going to be a close game. I think Memphis is game to continue to try to make mm. a run and steal this game six, but I think Golden State may prevail in the end. But I, I want to say, and Gene, I'll get your thoughts on this. It's it's always weird when you have a game like this. It's a blowout loss. It's not a heartbreaking loss. But honestly, in my opinion, I want to get your thoughts. A loss like this where you lose by almost 40 mm-hmm. almost doesn't feel as bad as, say, like the loss that happened with Boston where they let that slip away. Golden State can just kind of shrug this off yeah. and say, you know what, blowout loss one game. Mm-hmm. But that kind of loss that Boston had where you had the lead and let it slip away, that's going to kind of haunt you. So mm-hmm. I think this is a game Golden State can just put behind him and say, you know what, it's one game we didn't have it, we move on. Yeah, you could tell by – and I felt so bad for Mike Brown. You know, he's filling in there for, for Steve Kerr, and, and that's got to be a tough situation. And, you know, his – his mindset. I know he he's a, a professional, and he, you know he's the new coach now of the Sacramento Kings. And and oh wow, I'm I'm I, you know no one thought he had to coach two games, you know, uh, uh, because of Steve right. Kerr being out. But man, uh, that was certainly not a not a good feeling for him last night, having to lose that. But I, I got to say this too, and I agree with you. I totally agree with you that that Boston loss is going to hurt a little bit more. And I think they see the writing on the wall because you missed a golden op- opportunity there, yes. you know, to, to get in, into a be- better position to, you know, to win either on the road or at home. But that that championship experience, and, and did you see the shot of Giannis with the blood in his eye? What, what happened there? You Did you? I, yeah. I, it's just crazy. And I, I'm like, so these guys got that fire. And and, and, and and the championship experience, yeah, I think the Celtics are in trouble. But I want to say, uh, going back to Golden State, Dustin, that uh, I, I really wanted to see Jordan Poole put on the show last night, and he just had the worst game of his probably uh, career. I don't know. Uh, 20 minutes, one for six, uh, one for three from the three-point line. He just had three points last night, and uh, that's definitely going to change when they go back to San Francisco. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to change. That's something that kind of happens you see with these teams. These I won't call Jordan Poole a role player because he's been a bigger influence than that. But these these secondary guys seem to play better at home. You look at guys like um, you know Jordan Poole, Damian Lee, Kaminga. Kaminga actually had a nice yeah. game yeah, he did. last night. So so I think he's got some skill. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. They're definitely missing Gary Payton and his defense, but 
again, if it, if they're going to close this series out next game in game six, it's got to be Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, and Draymond Green. And, and Steph can't go four for ten. Um, Clay can't take just 12 shots. Those guys got to be locked in. They got to be ready to go. Um, and those got to be the two guys who and, – and even Andrew Wiggins. I mean, he goes two yeah. for six and only yeah. has five points. Yeah. He's an all-star this year. Those guys got to step up and be the guys to set the tone. Oh, yeah, you definitely got to put up. And that's the – one. And, and, you know, Kerr, Mike Brown, who, who, whoever's coaching, you know, just trying to uh, get the right players out there at the right time. Now, last night just wasn't their night. But I just think that is the most difficult thing to do as the head coach of the Golden State Warriors is to find out who, who, who you know, like Kaminga. You know, so he started and and uh, the last two games here, and I didn't really understand, you know, uh, why. Well, I mean, not saying that he's a bad guy, but it's just that – that uh, game planning for the, the Warriors has got to be difficult. Yeah, it's definitely difficult because they can throw out many different lineups to to who they want to put out there. I mean, they can go small, they can they can go a little bit bigger. They like to spread the floor. Mm-hmm. They got a lot of shooters, so it's a tough game plan. That's why I, I just give all the credit to Taylor Jenkins and the job he was able to do to make those adjustments. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I'm saying it again, Gene. I think Golden State's going to win. But I see that being in Golden State, a game that comes down to the last two minutes and who can make plays in the end. I think it's going to be that close. Ooh, well, we'll find out uh, tomorrow. They 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 don't have a lot of time in between now, so uh, they they you know they got to hop on a plane, get on over to California, and 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 Game Six is going to be tomorrow. And and uh, same thing with uh, Milwaukee and Boston. Game Six of that series is is going to be tomorrow. So I you know we're getting some action every night in the NBA now. That's the Yes, we are. These games are coming fast and furious. We had a couple of days off last week, but now it's every other day we've got these games ready to go. And like you said, we got those game sixes. And then, like you said, on the other side, we got some more games tonight that are going to be very interesting to see what happens. Yeah, let's get into those games tonight because uh, the and, and we will uh, go back to the West where the Phoenix Suns lead that series over in the Western Conference in my finals, uh, three games to two over the Dallas Mavericks. But Dallas is not done. And I keep thinking about what Magic Johnson said in an interview uh, a, a while back that don't go to sleep on the Dallas Mavericks. They were the fourth seed. They're playing the one seed. And for some reason, this series has become very interesting. It's very interesting. And, uh, hey, let's not listen to Magic, Magic Johnson. Let's let's listen to me, Gene. I believe I did have the Mavericks <laughs> in the series. So, so listen, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not backing off of that. I, I know it's it's one of those things where they say nothing happens until you lose the game on your home floor. And so far, these teams are taking care of business at home. And I've got Dallas to win tonight at home and go to a game seven. Ooh. And I think in game seven, Ooh. the is going to go for 45 or 50. Ooh. And Dallas is going to win in Game Seven. I'm still sticking with it. <laughs> You're right. Let's not listen to Magic because Dustin Fiver did say that. I, I, you, and I, you know, and and I could have easily have you know attended the the Dallas this series. I just, I guess, you know, personally, I'm so pissed off at the Suns for just you know making my Lakers just look meaningless, <laughs> and, that, and that's what they did last year in the, in the in the first round, I think, of the playoffs. And 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 of course, we all know the story with the Lakers uh, not making the playoffs this year. But uh, Monty Williams, Coach of the Year, uh, what did you think of that? Yeah, it, it's well deserved. I mean, his team went out there; they 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 were they had a chip on their shoulder for making the NBA Finals run and not winning it last year. And they had the best record in the NBA, number one seed overall, handled their business, won 60-plus games. So uh, he definitely deserves it, and his team definitely is. I think, like I said, it's all – I think his team and the Bucks team is the two favorites right now probably. But, again, there's just something about this Dallas team. I actually thought they had a good chance to steal that in game five mm-hmm. um, in Phoenix. They were playing good in that first half, but then Phoenix just blitzed them in the second half. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I, I like Dallas to bounce back tonight, but you know, even though Game Seven's in Phoenix, anything can happen. And when you have a guy like Luca, uh, some magic can happen. So I, I, I'm not going to go off my prediction, uh, but I do think Dallas gets a win. But you're right, Phoenix is the favorite. They're doing every they, they're taking care of business on their home court. That's all they got to do. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if Phoenix, who has that championship mindset, 
if they can go on the road and try to close the series out and get some rest. Yeah, and and, and then you know, hated to see the 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 Mother's Day uh, uh, melee that happened. Yes. I guess uh, with with uh, Chris Paul's family and and I have uh, since heard that that kid or uh, people whoever it was were had, you know the, I think they revoked their their uh, tickets or from attending the game, but you just never want to see that. And I've never seen Chris Paul get that upset or, you know, wanting to go after a fan. But Dustin, I got to ask you a question because I think I heard this conversation uh, with these fans becoming so uh, rowdy now and, and, and players now, uh, uh, how, how, how close are we to, to seeing, you know, well, we don't want to see anything like what we saw with the Pacers and the Pistons, but it seemed like it's heading that way again. It's it's definitely a line that we're getting close to again. You're right, Dean. It's just it's the, these fans are great, these crowds are great, but it's it's just it's it's always a few fans that take it over the line, and again, it, it gets further and further from where they're just yelling stuff or whether they're trying to do stuff to now they're putting hands on people's fans because yeah. they're, they're too drunk. And and again, you can't expect the players just to sit back and do nothing, especially when it comes to their family. No, because so they hear me like are, everybody. Are, yeah. So we are kind of teetering on that line where we, we've got to be careful. You can't expect, you know, the fans just to sit there and do anything and not have any consequences. Yes, they got kicked out, but that's that's just getting kicked out of a game. Like, you cannot put your hands on people. So it's one of these things we got to watch going forward um, because you're right. I think we are getting on a slippery slope. Where yeah, players, we are. You know, the players are, are told to kind of stay there, but – there's only going to be so long when something happens and they're going to go take up for their family or whatever's happening. I got to think that that's probably going to be a big off season adjustment there between the NBA and, and, and the, the, the arenas, the owners of these teams and, and how they manage uh, crowd control, game control, because you know, the, 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 even the booing all the time when a player has the ball, I, I think some of that stuff kind of feeds into it because I'm like, I just don't have the energy to boo every time Draymond Green touches the ball or this, that, and the other. That just takes too much energy. But uh, I think we're starting this. I, I don't know. You can't stop that. But that, that you know, I, I just really hate to see that. I'm like, just get over it. Just, you know, enjoy the game, cheer for your team, and and that type of stuff. I just don't think there's a place for it. There, There's definitely not a place for it. Like you said, hopefully, hopefully we can, you know, Get that under control. Obviously, we can't control everybody, but we don't want to. We don't want to talk bad about the fans because, for the most part, ninety nine percent of the fans are great. They bring yeah, that's true. That is so true. They 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 make the playoffs great. But it, you just you know how, how, you know that saying, Gene. Just one or two people can ruin yeah, everybody. Good, you don't yeah. want you don't want one or two morons to have to change the whole rules of how they have access. I know. Games, well, uh, so we so uh, Phoenix and Dallas. Uh, play tonight, and and uh, so I want to get your thoughts on wh- who who you think is going to win this game tonight. So you may disagree with me, but like I said, I'm going to go with Dallas at home. I think that building's been great. Luca has been great. Their role players, Jalen Brunson, Dwight Powell, Dorian Finney Smith, all those guys have stepped up, and I just think they're going to win at home, and it's going to and it's going to be three wins at home for Phoenix and three wins at home for Dallas, and we go to a game seven and see what happens. Um, but I, I, I just I like Dallas tonight. I think it'll be a close game because I do think Phoenix has that championship mentality to try to close it out. But I like Dallas to get a win at home. Yeah, you know I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say Phoenix is gonna take it tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm you know I'm gonna say that uh, I thought Golden State was gonna be in a position to, to close out, and and you know I think I think the Suns are gonna be fired up. I think the the emotional toll. Uh, Chris Paul might have his best game tonight. Who knows? I I, I think. The, the Suns are going to say, let's just end this series. Let's just finish it. And I, I, I'm looking for big games from Chris Paul and and uh, uh, Bridges and and uh, uh, what's the one kid's name? Booker and all all of those guys. I just look for Phoenix to just close it out tonight and and uh, and 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 wait for the the winner of the uh, Memphis and and Golden State. So let, let's look at the other game. We have Miami, the number one. See there uh, over in the Eastern Conference semifinals in the Philadelphia 76ers. So I thought the 76ers was, were done. And apparently they still got some life in them. Uh, Miami leads the series 3-2. to two. What are your thoughts on this on this matchup, on, on this series? Yeah, 
it's another one of those series where it's, you know, the home team taking care of business. Um, but it's been an interesting series because you finally get Joel Embiid back and, and Philadelphia takes care of business at home. James Harden finally has a big game. And I thought they had some momentum going down to Miami um, in game five and maybe had a chance to do something. But Miami just came out, even without Kyle Lowry, mm-hmm. they came out and bl- blitzed the Sixers and looking good. So I'm kind of I'm kind of doing this home the road thing here, Gene. But I think, again, going back home, I think Embiid and Harden will step up and they're going to win at home and force the game seven. Um, but I like Dallas in game seven in Phoenix, but I do not like Philly in game seven in Miami. I think back in Miami, I like Miami to take care of business to get the job done. But I do think that Philly is able to extend this to a game seven. Yeah, and I'm really uh, impressed with what Philly has done. Uh, you, you know, even though you're not getting these uh, highlight uh, performances by James Harden, which I think – uh, and I want to wanted to get your thoughts on James Harden. I mean, have we have has his best days uh, or are his best days behind him? I, I think they're behind him now. Now, does that mean he cannot be a good player? No. But if we're talking like superstar James Harden, you know, number one or number two guy, obviously Embiid's the number one guy. But like a top of the league guy, like he was in Houston in that first season in Brooklyn, I just think he's lost a step now. Can that change? It obviously can change if he maybe takes care of his body a little better, gets in better shape. Mm-hmm. Um, as he gets older, he needs to make sure that he's, you know, keeping in shape and, and, and being able to keep his quickness because that's his biggest asset is that off the dribble first step to be able to either drive to the basket or step back and shoot a three. So I just I, I don't see the same James Harden. I don't see that explosive first step that he used to have back in Houston. Now again, that doesn't mean that he can't be a good player and have big games. He had 31 a couple of games ago, but. Night in and night out, I just don't see him being the same Jane Harden in the Houston. What do you, what do you think? Well, I'm laughing right now because you, you said staying in shape. You know, you go from eating turkey legs in Houston to Philly cheesesteaks now. That's right. <laughs> so that that can't be too good for him. But, uh, no, I just think he's st- – well, look, man, this guy has had big contracts and big money. You know, it's just – and playoff experience. He just really – and I think Philly and, and, and uh, Daryl Morey, who, who who was his OGM in Houston, you know, they brought this guy in to, to you know, be a leader. Sometimes when you're not putting up points, you got to do something. But I, and I've, I've just seen a lazy James Harden for some reason now. I don't know. Maybe that's where he's at in, in his career now, thinking that he has, you know, put in the time. But, man, he doesn't have that championship, you know, and he's trying to chase that thing. But no. – no, go ahead. Yeah, the one thing I'll say in his defense is let's not forget that when he was in Houston, um, that he was one of the probably the top player in the mm-hmm, NBA with mm-hmm. the highest usage rate. I mean, yeah. we're talking ball in his hands at all times, being the main creator, scorer, whatever it may be. The way they used him in, in, in Houston, they used him to the max ability. So it is possible that he's got a little more wear and tear from that high usage True. rate, and he's just and he's just getting older and he's just losing a step. So. You know, could it could it be that he gets back in shape and maybe picks it back up possibly, or could it just be that he's had so much mileage on his body? Yeah, you're right. And maybe he's losing a step. But you're right. He 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 doesn't have that um, defining moment in the playoffs where he's stepped up and helped his team win a series or or, or win a big time game. So that's always gonna gonna haunt him. So maybe tonight's a night that he can have a big game and help force the game. Seven. Yeah, and I and I'd like to see that. I mean, because you know I've always uh, supported James Harden, and and believe me, he has had some some crazy highlights over the years. But this Philadelphia team is built. Uh, it's just not built for Embiid to just take over. You you know your big man can only do so much, and 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 he's not a hundred percent. But you really need James Harden to. To, you know, if this thing is going to work in Philly and he says that he wants to extend and stay in Philly, and I'm sure because he's comfortable with 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 uh, with the GM there. But this would be huge for him to to, you know, he's just got to find that fire, you know, and, and, and get it done tonight. So I, I I'm, I'm going to go with Philly to, to, to get it done. But I don't like the the 76ers to win the series. I think Miami yeah. Miami is just, you know, well coached. Uh, shooters galore. You just don't know who's going to be the hot person, and chances are you're going to have more than one uh, on that team. Yeah, no, I mean that that that's just it. That you, you, with, with with Philadelphia, you kind of got to rely on Harden and then be obviously you have Max and Tobias Harris. You have some good players, but they just don't have the depth and the culture like you said that Miami has. It's not just Miami going deep with Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero. 
Duncan Robinson has barely even played in this series. I mean, but they've got depth. But it's also the defense of Miami. And I just think going back home for that game seven, um, having that culture, having that defense, that they, they, they will have what it takes to get it done. Um, you know, but props to Philly for, for pushing this series far, even without MB those first couple games. But you're right, Drew. That organization is going to be interesting in the next year because they made such a big trade and gave up so much to get Harden that really their championship window was this year and next year. Um, so, you know, if Harden's taking a step back, it's going to look like they lose that trade. So, there's a, even though Miami's the one seed and they're the favorite, mm-hmm. there's still a lot of pressure on the Philly team to, to try to make something happen. Yeah, and, and, and I know we're getting closer to, you know, picking uh, or getting closer to the NBA Finals, man, and we've kind of st- uh, been hesitant as far as picking our NBA uh, Finals, but I, I think I'm at a point now where, you know, we, we you got both number one seeds in there. You got, uh, I mean, just kind of look at it. You got two number four seeds there uh, with uh, with Philly and Dallas, and you got two number three seeds with Golden State and Milwaukee, and you got two number two seeds there. So this thing is so balanced out now mm-hmm. to where any one of these teams could win. But just looking at it right now, Dustin, before we close out here, who 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 is your likely NBA Finals matchup? So right now, my likely matchup. Um, I I I have one definitive, and I have one definitive on the one side, and on the other, I'm on the fence. But on the one side, I'm definitely taking Milwaukee out of the East. Uh, I've seen enough from them. They've shown me the championship pedigree. I think Chris Middleton will come back. Getting him back will only add even more. And I just think they have everything that it takes to to make a second championship run. And so I got them coming out of the East. Mm-hmm. On the West. I'm going to I'm going to stick with what I did so I'm not flip-flopping and I'm going to stay with the Golden State Warriors. Mm. I do think I do think the Golden State Warriors have that championship experience. Yes, they had a letdown last night, but I think they know what it takes to get it done and I think Steph and Clay and them will come up big in the conference finals. So I'm going to take um the Warriors because again, I think Dallas is going to win the series. But if Phoenix somehow gets by um Dallas Mavericks and it's Phoenix and Golden State. That is going to be one hell of a seven game series and that could go either way and that's going to be a hell of a one to watch. But I'm going to stick with Golden State for now. So Golden State and Milwaukee in my finals. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to go with, uh, I don't know. I, I just think Miami is going to just be able to outshoot uh, the Bucks in, a, in the NBA uh, Eastern Conference Finals. I, I think uh, they'll let Giannis have his way. But when it defensively, you know, and they are a bigger team. They 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 are big. But just man, I, I, the shooting of Miami, they they just got so many great shooters on that team. And I think in in the seven game series, and this and they, this is somewhat of a rivalry, or it would be if these two were to, to meet up, uh, because you know a couple of years ago, Miami had knocked off Milwaukee, kept Milwaukee from getting where they wanted to go, and then Milwaukee paid paid them back. You know, because they have met usually in the first round or the second round. So this would be for the opportunity to go to the finals. And I just think Miami, I, I like Miami. I think they, they're going to be there. And over in the West, um, I like Golden State. I, you know, because I, I'm i like you. I think Dallas might, might, who knows, they might get past Phoenix. But I, I think this Golden State team, and, and depending on what happened uh, in game six with, with Memphis, and and I, I just think Golden State is back. I think Kerr come yeah. back, and and uh, so I'm I got Golden State Miami in my NBA Finals. And that, that I mean that's that that'd be a good matchup as well. They're both capable teams. So we'll see what happens. I, these conference finals are going to be very interesting when it gets mm-hmm. to the mm-hmm. Like I said, any 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 one of those final four teams has a chance to win an NBA championship. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and any matchup is is going going to be desirable. It, it 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 wouldn't even matter. Uh, at one time, it looked like the Celtics were going to get to the to the finals, and that still could happen. And and uh, you know, and 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 Philly. Uh, well, I don't think I don't. I think we both agree that Philly probably <laughs> yeah. won't. You know, because of the injuries, they just not a hundred percent. But hey, Dustin, uh, I, I think I'm. I think my time here in Memphis is done. I had enough barbecue, catfish, you name it. I probably need to go to the nearest gym when I get back to Houston. <laughs> That's right. You, you had a good time there. Now it's time to watch the rest of these games. And then once we get our conference final matchups, you have to plan a trip somewhere else to see where you're going to go for the conference final. Hey, you know, I, well, I tell you what. Uh, uh, and, and, and oh, and uh, 
tonight, not only do we have NBA games uh, tonight, yeah. but the release of the 2022 NFL schedules tonight, yeah. Dustin. And yeah. and I know you're excited about that, but uh, what's going on? Is that your Carolina team still in the NHL playoffs? They are. They actually have a game tonight as well, so it's going to be a multi-TV night game. NBA playoffs, <laughs> schedule release, and NHL playoffs. The Duh. Hurricanes have a 3-2 lead going yes. back to Boston tonight, so they got a chance to yep. to eliminate. And it is true, Gina, the Hurricanes win and the Penguins win. They will play each other next round. Oh, hey, you know, now I will, I can't wait to get back and get my Penguin jersey on because those, those, those Penguins are just doing me right there. It's something about those colors, Dustin. I think I've seen those before somewhere. Yeah, I think you have. If it somehow is the Hurricanes and the Penguins, we're going to have to make a friendly bet on that one. We can. We will. And and that, that'll be exciting. But, hey, Dustin, thanks for, for, for coming on here. And uh, everyone out there listening, I hope you've enjoyed the Mean Gene Show here on, on iHeartRadio, powered by Podbean. And we'll see you back for the uh, NBA Conference Finals here on the Mean Gene Show. Dustin, we'll see you, man. Sounds good, Gene.